Hey everyone! Many of you have expressed interest in learning a little bit more about how I amplify my instruments in a live setting, so I thought we might take a few minutes and take a tour through my pedal board. Let's get to it! Okay, first and foremost, I think most of us would agree that our most accurate replication of our sound is going to come from some sort of microphone. So this is a uh, Ear Trumpet Labs Edwina condenser microphone. Uh, and you don't have to have anything too fancy and high dollar and pretty. I also use these a lot of times at gigs. This is just a small diaphragm condenser, um, Samson CO2 microphone. These at the time I bought them several years ago were about, I think 80 something for the pair. They've went up a little bit since then, but they are a great steal if you're looking for small diaphragm condensers. I've used them on a lot of recordings. Let me know and I can link those to you uh, if you're interested in hearing them. Um, but there's one, well, a couple of little problems with a condenser trying to get it to go through effects, right? One is that you have XLR, um, which you can get a, a cable that has an XLR on one end and quarter inch on the other end, so then you can plug it into any of these pedals. But the other problem is that you have to have phantom power for a condenser mic anyways, and... Um, that's just a little bit of, for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, it's a little bit of extra voltage that is required for these mics to work well. And, uh, so that's what I have here. This little pedal doesn't do much. It's pretty much just on and off and I can control different phantom power, um, voltages. I usually just keep it set to 48 and I can turn it on and off here. And my cable, quarter inch cable, or, uh, sorry, XLR cable from my, uh, microphone is going into the input here. And then I have another cable, identical to the one I just showed you, right here, going out. And uh, one thing real quick about this, you can get any Phantom Power Supply. This is one by X-Vive, which is kind of hard to see under there, X-V-I-V-E. And we'll hear a little bit more about them later in my setup. But one thing I really like about this particular um, pedal is it's rechargeable. Now, on my board, I have the little USB charger connected into the side and connected to my power strip over here, so I'll never run out of charge. Um, but it would still work if I unplugged that. So um, I'm not really sure. I haven't really used that in practice, but um, that would be something if I was short a number of plugs or something and didn't have a place to plug in my phantom power, you could, you could have this independently. So my microphone, I am actually running into the Venue DI. So originally, um, this was kind of my original setup because... This was the pedal I had first. Many of you have this LR Bags Venue. It's a great little pedal. You have a, a mute function um, that also works with a tuner. So you could use that with the microphone as well, though of course the microphone is gonna pick up more than just um, what your pickup would. So just kind of keep that in mind. It has a boost function that you can set on the back here to a certain level of how much boost you want. That's great for solos or, um, you know, if you're playing out and suddenly you're not as loud as you think you might be in the band, that's great to kind of have that option um, on the fly. And you can adjust in the back if you need more gain. But uh, one thing about this that's really interesting is uh, that I think is helpful to know is what each of these bands that are set are, are what frequency they're set to. So your bass frequency is actually set to about 90 which if you're doing, um, I play a lot of different instruments through this setup. So I play guitar, I play octave mandolin, I play mandolin, I play mandola. Um, and it's good to know what the um, 90 hertz correlates to in pitch. And in fact, you can kind of, let's say you have a uh, this notch frequency here basically takes out something that is too heavy or, or disturbing. And um, I've kind of got it set there because that's about where my open D is on my mandolin and it's kind of heavy on my mandolin through through mics and pickups. So I've got that set there, but it's a really good to familiarize yourself with the um, hertz to pitch um, correlation. So you can kind of know, like if you have a frequency with these low mids, I was pulling out um, a frequency kind of right about there. At one point I had this set, you can see I've got some pieces of tape just in case these get moved. Um, I know where to set them back. At one point I had this set here and um, I was getting some feedback at a certain with a certain PA with a certain song, and so we had to move that down. Um, the downside to this is you have to do everything manually, so you can't really store more than one preset in here unless you are going to go down and adjust it. So if you're playing a bunch of different instruments, this is a little bit difficult, um, which is why I kind of use the mic because I figure you know the mic is going to most accurately capture, even though the instruments sound different. They're different instruments, so of course they're going to sound different. 
Um, so I have all of that, um, or I have the output from that going into this little mower, mower pedal, which is um, an AV switch or a Y pedal. So I'm actually using this um, as a Y pedal, basically an, an um, AB would mean that I could have either this or this. I'm actually combining both of them, which is why I've got this tape over here so that that doesn't get moved as a Y pedal and taking that to my output. The other half of that signal is coming from the voice print DI. So this pedal is also a really great product from LR Bags. It's a little more expensive, about $100 more new than the Venue. But what you can do is you can program different presets in here. And I've got all of these. So this is F5 pickup for my mandolin, mandola, um, Northfield octave mandolin. And you can hit to the next one with this. So you can program up to 100 presets in here. So if, let's say you have five instruments that you want to store uh, their volumes and their EQs and all of that. Um, then you can copy and paste that down. So if you have a set list with where you're changing back and forth, you can set this um, and change it to the order of, of what you want in the set list. And I can get into that a little bit more. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on any one pedal on here. But um, the nice thing about this is that you can use the, um, the technology that comes with this pedal to do a recording of your instrument and it'll set you up kind of like a preset or what they call a voice print for your instrument. I sometimes will use that or I'll experiment with how much of that I want in my signal. But one thing that I really like is you can go on the app on your, your phone um, or your tablet and kind of adjust the EQ, which is what I've got set here. And also something that's really important is that you can adjust the gain. So not all my instruments have the same pickup on them. For instance, my um, this is Violin 5. My five string violin um, made by Gary Bartig, Acoustic Electric Strings, has a uh, pickup that's very hot. It's, it's a lot louder than my LR Bags um, radius that I use for my F5 or my Mandola. So this pedal is useful in itself because I can um, set those to different levels so that they one doesn't sound a whole lot louder than the other. Um, one thing that's important to mention on here, this is kind of crammed in here, but I will show you what the, um, this is a receiver, also by X-Vive. Um, I have, I just put that label on there so I'd be able to tell them apart. The reason being because the transmitters look very similarly. I have them in this high-tech custom-made box. Not really. This is something I got from Walmart or Meyer that you're supposed to have like fishing supplies or something in. But anyhow, I made it into a little case for these guys. And um, so these are the transmitters. They look almost identical. The casing is very, very similar. You just says transmitter there. Um, so I turn it on, have this hooked into my pickup. And they say you can't use these with active pickups. I've not had an issue with my, my guitar has a battery um, in it. And so I've not had any issues really with it working with any of my guitars that have batteries in the pickups. Um, but it definitely works fine with passive pickups as well. And you basically just set this to the same channel. you got a couple different channels you can calibrate as your receiver. Now, one thing that's important, if you're running a bunch of different instruments, you cannot have two of these on at the same time. They're set to the same channel, but you can have two of them on going to this simultaneously. So if you and your buddy are playing at the same time and you both want to go through one input, that's not going to work because they're going to want to cancel each other out. You'll get interference and such. So what I do is I have these in my instrument. I play the song or whatever with that instrument. And then when I go to put it back on the stand, I click this off. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to. And sometimes I make the mistake of not doing that. I've done that before, um, but it's really nice. I've got four of these. Um, so basically I play four or five instruments at a time, not at a time, but at a, <laughs> not simultaneously, but for a show. And I just turn those off when I put them on the stand. So originally, going back to my first thought, you know, the condenser is the truest form of capturing, or a microphone is the truest form of capturing sound, but I would be playing gigs where I would want just a little bitty bit of gain um, and that boost. And so that's why I decided to create a setup where I had the pickup 
involved in my signal as well. So just the pickup, I don't know that I would be crazy about doing. I'm sure if I was playing with a heavy rock band or something, that would be the best option. Um, because, you know, at that point, volume is maybe going to be a little more priority over tone. But I found with this having a nice blend of the, the highs and the airiness of the pickup and the warmth um, of the... Um, or sorry, the, the highs and airiness of the microphone and then the warmth of the pickup has kind of been the, the best combination. And the nice thing about this setup with this pedal, like you're, you're probably wondering, or someone out there is probably wondering, well, why couldn't you just put these into a splitter cable or a Y cable? Well, um, this Mora does a better job of combining these signals and kind of having the two um, pickup or uh, the two DIs separate allows me to control the level. So if I really don't want a lot of pickup, I got this tape set here so it won't move any on me, but I could take this off and move this down or I could bring the gain up. You notice the gain is pretty high on this. I'm not sure why it has to be that high for the microphone. I just leave the boost on um, where it's at. That I haven't quite figured out, but it seems like to level, to be balanced with the voice print, I kind of have to have this set up. It's not clipping or anything, so I'm not um, concerned about that. You do want to kind of pay attention to this little, little monitor right here. Um, it will tell you if, if you're clipping or your signal's too high. I'm also running all of these off of a power supply, which is essentially just a bunch of adapters and daisy chains um, that I have Velcroed under the board. And so after it leaves the um, Y signal combiner um, channel switch pedal, whatever you want to call it, I'm going into this massive thing. So this is the Hall of Fame 2 Reverb. Um, this is just a personal preference of what I like because I like having different storable reverbs so that if I wanted just a little bit of reverb I have this this is more like a hall reverb this is more like a mod with some chorus and some different things it's actually really cool for solo mandolin because if you're playing melodic slow stuff it kind of helps to sustain your sound a little bit um, but you can go into any reverb pedal if you want reverb there's a bunch of things out there the just a regular hall of fame uh, if you can find those it's just a one setting um pedal the small one is is really good but you can also get one that has just where you can change all of these around um but then you don't get the option of storing them you have it's kind of like this you're manually adjusting whatever your parameters are and then last but not least i'm going into a spark mini boost i haven't really used this a lot but the idea with this is okay i have a boost on the microphone um, unfortunately, this pedal does not have a boost with it. The only thing I would say about the voice print is I wish you could go to a next and back. That would be really helpful so that I don't have to like put everything in a continually forward order. Um, and I wish it had a boost switch on it. That would be the only thing I say. So I could put my boost in between this signal chain here, um, but I kind of prefer it at the end because if I've got these two balanced where I want them, then this just brings everything, including my reverb, all the way up. Um, and then I go out from that quarter inch to um, the mixer or the DI or whatever I'm using after that. But this is pretty much my board. Um, I did have this in a, a bit smaller of a housing. And when I got this for Christmas uh, this past year, I ran out of room. So it does look like there's a lot of available space, but this... this um, board is two feet long so it's a good size um it comes in this giant case here uh you can get it in a soft case but i just know as much as i'm loading stuff in and out and stacking stuff i want to be able to have something that is going to protect it um, my 15 month old climbs on this all the time with no problem and uh so that's that but that's pretty much the rundown on my board i will show you all in just a second um, another pedal that I use a lot at my church and that I recently bought for myself. Um, it doesn't affect my sound um, instrumentally as much, but if you're a singer along with it, then it's a great little tool to have and you do have a lot of different options with that. Um, but if you want to know any more about any one of these pedals and how they operate, I know there's a lot of um, this one, obviously, there's not much to say about it. Um, the splitter's kind of straightforward. The boost you can just set to a certain amount. You can see I've got it set really low. It doesn't take much to bring bring up your sound. Um, and you just hit that and you're on, hit that and you're off. Um, but if you want to know more in particular about um, these three here on the bottom, let me know and I'll try to make a video on them. There's a lot of stuff out there already. Um, 
and especially from companies that that know more about these but i can just show you in my experience what i have done with these pedals but uh hold on one second i'll click over and let you all check out the um kind of a bonus pedal to my setup it's not on the board because i kind of use it separately and not all the time um but here check this out all right so some of you may have seen this before this um, pedal is essentially on the surface a vocal processor and a harmonizer um, I use this particular one at my church every Sunday. Uh, essentially what this does is it combines, well, it can't combine, but I use it um, using a guitar in, um, which is, again, I'm coming straight from my pedal board. This isn't hooked in at the moment, but I could hook in my quarter inch from my pedal board right in where it says guitar in, All right? And so that's how I'm bringing everything that I just told you about into this little pedal and then I have an XLR for that out to our main and our uh, our mixer and whatever. But this also has a voice out which goes along with your mic in here. I use a wireless headset mic because um, that's just the most convenient walking up and down and being by the podium and everything. Um, but that goes in right there, XLR in, XLR out, out, quarter inch in. Um, there's some other stuff that this does that I don't use a whole lot but I like that it has the options of putting in harmonies at the click of a button. So that's really nice um, to just sort of fill things out. You can change your vocal effects, make your voice sound all kinds of different ways. I'm not gonna get into all that because I know most of you probably are not super interested in all of that. Um, but if you just go back, it's got a bunch of like songs that you probably know, the harmonies are preset in there. Um, but as a default, you just add one high harmony. Essentially what it does, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Essentially what it does is it adds a harmony based on to what it's receiving, the information it's receiving in here from your instrument. And also it has some mics that kind of pick up harmonies and, and um, ambience in the room. And that, it does a pretty good job. You've got to be pretty clear about your chords. Um, if you're playing, you know, noodles and lines and stuff like Sierra Hall does where you're just playing a bunch of notes that don't always line up and with clear chords this probably wouldn't work but if you're strumming if you're and you know a strummer and you really like those clear major minor seventh chords and whatever this is going to do a good job so it can put a high harmony above you can put two high above you it can put one above one below can put two below um and then you start getting in all these sounds tape echo rockabilly but one thing that's nice about this that i um, like is that you, it has a vocal compressor on it. It has different tones that you can create for your voice, even though there's not an EQ that you can actually use for that. Um, and it has reverbs that you can put on your voice. So that's nice. That's fewer pedals that I have to, to go through when I'm singing. You can also do all of that same um, thing with your instrument effects. It's labeled guitar effects, but I have these off because I don't need them with this set up going into it, but you can put in um, reverb, you can put in chorus. Um, there's a something called a body res that's just a default in here that I send, tend to like. You can get a body res pedal separately, um, but I have a little bit dialed in. It's not a ton, but it seems to give me a, a bigger, fatter, rounder sound um, without it being too boomy. So there are some things you can do with even the guitar effects or mandolin effects or whatever you're playing. Um, a lot of this I just leave set to default and play around with how much of this body res I want in it. Um, but if I like my sound, usually I try not to tweak stuff up too much because then I can mess it up. Um, so yeah, this is just sort of an extra a bonus that I have. Usually when I'm playing at church, this is on my left side um, of the podium. This is over here on the right. This I kind of just will adjust between songs as I change instruments, maybe putting on the reverb for communion or whatever. Um, and then this I use pretty regularly with my left foot when I'm coming in and out of choruses or whatever, depending on who else is singing with me. I don't want to cover up other singers. So that's pretty much my setup. Um, it's not overly complicated. Let me show you real quick um, before I end this what I have. Um, for those of you who don't know, much about the LR Bags Radius pickup. Let me show you what it looks like on my mandolin. So here is my trusty axe of choice. This is a Northfield um, NF5S. This is their standard bread and butter. Um, I've done a few things to this instrument 
um, aside from just putting on the pickup. Um, so I've got added the James tailpiece. Um, you can see the varnish is not quite that same matte that um, that they have on their, their standard uh, that did that. That was uh, Atlantic City 2019 right there. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I've polished this up a little so where it has not quite a mirror gloss, but it's sort of in between your matte and your glossy finish. Got a nice armrest on here that is comfortable for me. I know not everybody likes those. Um, up at the top, the folks up in Northfield found this nice mother of pearl um, head or um, truss rod cover. And uh, Roger Simonoff had some of these that he was selling. These are mother of pearl buttons that are epoxied on there. So it definitely doesn't look exactly like your standard NF5 off the bat. Um, but anybody who knows these instruments would know what it is pretty well. There it is. Um, okay, so let's look at this LR Bags Radius pickup. Now, this is very, very similar to where Sierra Hole has hers positioned. Um, and I kind of modeled it off of a picture of hers that she had on her Instagram or whatnot. And I believe she has her cable soldered, but what I did was actually roll it up and then put the cap back on it. Um, if you know something about soldering, which I do not then you could obviously make this short enough to where you don't have a bunch of excess. To me, that's one thing that bugs the heck out of me is to have a bunch of excess wire just like hanging out down here. Um, so yeah, I have this also on my Mandola, on my um, Northfield Octave Arch Top, Octave Mandolin Arch Top, and my Weber um, Flat Top Oval Hole, Weber Sage Octave Mandolin, I have um, Pick up by J, JJB, I believe is the company. You can find them. Uh, they sell their stuff through eBay. But their um, prestige pickups are pretty good and accurate. And um, so that's what I've got on on both of those instruments. They're kind of like a knockoff K&K. &K. Um, they seem okay. But again, this thing is really helpful if you you know have any quackiness of those piezo pickups. You can go through, sweep through your frequencies on your, your app with your EQ and... Um, take some of that out. You can boost however much of the low end you want so you really get the warmth of the instrument. And again, the way my, my design is, you have a lot of that signal coming through um, coming through the uh, condenser mic. And um, so then you can dial however much of it in you want. I'm sure, you know, I would love to almost have another one of these there because I think this is a little more versatile than the venue. But um, that's just that's just my opinion. Um, and you know, then I could dial this mic for every instrument, but that would be a lot of button switching too. So, um, so yeah. And then I've just got a couple of guitars that I like, um, uh, nothing too fancy or high dollar. They've worked for me, um, through the years that have whatever pick up the Fishman under saddle or whatever that was in it originally. Um, and then my violin, uh, that has a built in pickup, uh, that is really fantastic. So that's pretty much my, my gear setup. Um, it's a lot of work sometimes for every single event that I play to bring this big old board with me um, because it is heavy. It's a, over 30 pounds for this board or for the board and the case um, that goes with it. So it's a lot of work, but I feel like that my sound um, is worth it. And uh, so, yeah, I actually have an event tomorrow up in Salem, Indiana, if anybody's around that area at the um, Maple Syrup Festival, three to five, I'm playing some songs. So I um, hope this was insightful and helpful to some folks. And I will catch you guys later. Keep on picking out there and making good music.